Hey gang, welcome to my channel. I'm the Pony314 and what we have here is an icon of the greatest generation. The first semi-automatic rifle to serve as a general issue rifle in any army in history. That's right, this is the M1 Garand. And so, here are the basics. This is a gas-operated semi-automatic rifle. It's chambered in 30-06. It uses an eight round integral magazine loaded with an end block clip which when the last run is fired ejects with a distinctive ping sound it has a safety at the front of the trigger guard and a 24 inch barrel and its development is a long and really complicated story so we're gonna keep it simple this rifle was the work of John Garand and yes, it looks like the man and the rifle have different pronunciations, but whatever. But he was a French-Canadian by birth and a naturalized American citizen, and he worked at Springfield Armory. He began working on this design way back in 1919, and Garand was a maverick to say the least, and had, I think, two dozen working models by 1924. And the following year, the U.S. Army started testing this rifle against other semi-automatic rifles at Fort Benning. And these tests went on for, well, quite a few years. Later testing models fired a 276 caliber rifle round, and by 1931, the Garand had effectively won these trials, but Army Chief of Staff Douglas MacArthur and others insisted on rechambering this in .30-06. That was to allow it to make use of the Army's existing ammo stocks. So its adoption by the Army was approved in 1936. There were still a few issues that had to be corrected, but general adoption began in 1937. But believe me, adoption was slow. Slow enough that by the time of Pearl Harbor in December of 1941, the U.S. Army hadn't fully replaced its old bolt-action Springfield M1903s with the M1 Garand. But during 1942, the Garand had become the standard U.S. Army infantry rifle, and with the Army grabbing as many of these as possible, the U.S. Marines had to wait till the end of 1942 before they could claim it as their standard. The adoption of the M1 Garand made the United States the first country to adopt a semi-automatic rifle as its military standard and the only belligerent in World War II to do so. Now, don't get me wrong, this was not the only semi-automatic rifle to see use in World War II. Oh no, no, I mean, the Germans had the Gewehr 41 and the 43, Russians had the SVT-38 and SVT-40, and at the end of the war they had even introduced the SKS, but those rifles were kind of rare by comparison, and they were usually in the hands of specially trained troops, and bolt-action rifles remained the standard for everyone but the U.S. And about five and a half million of these were made, gave outstanding performance everywhere. It was accurate, reliable, and the fact that it was semi-automatic meant that American soldiers and Marines could keep their sights on target while firing without having to move their heads, and much greater rate of fire could be decisive at close to medium range. I mean, imagine the difference that could make in, say, house-to-house -house fighting in Europe or the jungles on those Pacific islands. True, it's true that rifles generally don't win wars per se, but they certainly win firefights. Even George Patton, probably speaking with some bias, called it, say it with me now, the greatest battle implement ever devised. The closest thing to any actual issues with the M1 Garand are that, you know, for one thing, the end block clip, you couldn't keep the magazine topped off. And that ping sound, when the clip's ejected, could give away the fact that your rifle's empty. But I don't think the GI complained about that very much. I mean, he knew he was the luckiest grunt in the war compared to those in other countries using bolt-action rifles. And most of those are only slightly improved versions of what they'd had in World War I. I mean, having the ability to fire eight rounds as quickly as you can squeeze the trigger while being able to keep your sights on target while the other guy gets five shots, usually, and can only fire one before having to rack that bolt to chamber another one, well, which would you rather have? Seriously, now. But 
World War II and the American servicemen who used it made the M1 Garand an icon. But at the end of the war wasn't the end of the Garand. It was still the standard U.S. military rifle during Korea, and some were still in use even in the early days of Vietnam. And the M14 that became the new standard U.S. military rifle you know, around about 1957 was really nothing but a souped up Garand chambered in the 308 NATO round and with a 20 round box magazine. And since the M14 is in use with the U.S. military today, the M1 Garand's influence is still pretty visible. And I'm sorry, that's just awesome. But you know what else is awesome? Shooting the Garand. So we're going to head out and do that now. So everyone get in the car. We're going to the range. We're out here at the Municipal Shooting Range in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico with the M1 Garand, my favorite rifle. Down the range a few dozen yards, we've got a bleeding zombie target. And I'm very curious to see what eight rounds of 30 out six are going to do to that thing. So let's get started. After about 1953, the M1 Garand did see some foreign use. Japan, West Germany, South Korea, Denmark, Greece, and some other countries used it. And the last M1 Garands were not retired by the U.S. Regular Army until, I think, 1965. And after that, were still in use by the Navy, by National Guard and Reserve units, into the 70s. And even today, the classic M1 Garand is still used by some military dr drill teams, ROTC units still use it, but what helps make the M1 Garand such a keeper is the fact that it's really in its own class. I mean, it's just not like anything else that anybody had back in its heyday. Then there's the fact that it was a pretty radical design back in its day, and seriously, how often is something that's just really, really different uh, get to be a standard? and perform as well as the Garand. Well, it's not common, that's for sure, but the M1 Garand is my favorite rifle in the world. And I'd wanted one since I was a kid, and even if I could probably shoot other rifles better, if I could only have one rifle in the world, this would be it. So, what do you say we finish strong and do a little bit more shooting? But first, if you want to help keep this channel going, then you can do us a solid and help support us on Patreon. There's a link in the description. Anyway, let's take this classic American beauty back to the range. So everybody, let's get back in the car. It's time for our second shoot with the M1 Garand. And I don't have anything particularly interesting to say. I'm just eager to get started. Now that's more like it. So that was our episode on my favorite, the M1 Garand. Thanks for watching. Do hope you enjoyed. And if you like what we do on this channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button down there. I'm the Pony 314, and I'll see you at the range.